Keith will definitely be around at the end. Please welcome our next speaker, Alisan. see at least at um, female leadership events, women empowering type events, so I'm glad that we can have her here in person, finally. Um, do you want to take the microphone? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah? Okay, so thank you. Just click right. Yeah, you just click right. Thank you. So a couple of days ago, I, sent, I was sending my husband to work and I told him that, you know, I'm going to do this event. Oh, call fuck up. Like, what? Like, yeah. And I have seven minutes. What? That's fucked up. You should tell the organizer it's fucked up. <laughs> So, in a rare occasion, and I'm actually following his uh, advice to start this off, right? And I rarely do this anymore because I have an option. So, you have an option in life. You, you really, really do. So, um, I was coming out today with my youngest daughter. She's three. Where are you going, mom? Um, and I said, I'm going out. Are you coming back? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm coming back. And then, because I rarely do this, and then my helper was like, where, where are you going? Can I come? Like, no, you can't come. And in my heart, I'm thinking, I'm not going to let you rob me of the job of saying fuck all night, right? And not be promiscuous about this. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get started. How many of you don't know who I am? Okay, so that's fucked up. So, when you saw this thing, how many of you did check me out? Okay, so the rest of you are fucked up. Okay. So just to break the ice so that we are on the same page and we're not fucked up, I am a mother <laughs> to three kids and, uh, and I am a spiritual entrepreneur who believes in angel dust and fairy dust, like yes, the woo-woo kind. And um, I can just read it, right? <laughs> so clearly you're all fucked up tonight and I think you believe that you're fucked up, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Guess what? I also used to think that I'm fucked up, right? So, therefore, this advanced fuck up for beginners. And uh, this is the unfuckable step by step guide to unfuck yourself. <laughs> so, see, I can't have my kids with me, otherwise, they'll rob me of the joy of saying fuck up, right? Alright, so I know I'm smart. You don't know I'm smart, right? So in the next slide, I'm going to prove to you that I'm really smart just to sound really smart. Until you make your unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate by the great Kalanam. See, only a smart person can come up with this, right? So to be honest, I can't remember my slides, so I'm just going to go with the flow because there's only seven minutes. And I'm going to talk really fast, so suck it up, okay? <laughs> All right, so how fucked up am I? I think I was fucked up right at the beginning of birth. My mom didn't want me. She told me that I was a mistake and she only wanted my sister. So when I was growing up, I felt really rejected from her. Um, and that led me to being more fucked up because I, didn't, I rejected myself. So therefore, I ended up looking like this. So how would anybody love someone like this with Afro hair? I didn't even love myself, right? And then you are like puberty and you're like, oh my god, I came from a convent school. And then you're like at the stage, oh, I like boys. But the boys not looking at me. Even the lesbians won't look at me. Fuck! You know? Like, shit. So then I got to this period of time. And this was when I... Uh, uh, my mom gave me the permission of going to be a model. I don't know what she was thinking, right? But I accepted it anyway. And so that was when I got into alcohol, I got into drugs, and then she told me that you need to find a rich man looking like this. I don't know what she was thinking, but that was the conditioning that I had from her. Like, you've got to find a rich man, you've got, it doesn't matter if he's married, just go find someone and go fuck yourself, right? So that was that. And so I guess I was a drug addict, and at that time, I had to do certain things to get drugs. I don't have to spell it out, it is the title of the night, right? So that was that. If you don't have to sell your body for shit, then you're not that fucked up. If you haven't been into drugs and your mom trying to kill you, then you're not that fucked up, okay? So all oh, this is good for you. And then, um, at the age of 19, I, I came back from the States and uh, I got my end levels again. I was so fucked up. The, the school thought I was too good for them. They called my mom in at the age of 16 and said, you know what, I think your daughter is just too good for us. You better, let her, you better take her out of school. So I went to high school dropout as well. I didn't attend college as well. 
So um, I came back at the age of 19, I attended my end levels, and then I could become a flight stewardess because my mom says, go marry a rich man. And how the fuck do I get to know rich men? By being a flight stewardess. And that's what I did. So, um, but I didn't end up marrying a rich man. I ended up marrying this guy, and this kind of like sums it up for our relationship. You see how it is? I'm still like this. So, um, <laughs> a lot of my, my husband's colleagues say that he's just so lucky to marry someone like me. I'm self sufficient. I say, did you tell them that I'm neurotic, I'm crazy, and I'm psycho? And I'm crazy. So, you sure you they want to marry someone like this? So, when I met him, we were heavily in debt. We were so in debt, and my intention was just to marry somebody and find a guy to validate that I'm lovable. Anybody can relate, like, you know? Yeah. So, that was what happened. We were in debt. I was in debt for many, many years. And, oh gosh, that's so long ago. And I actually loved him so much that I conned him to have a baby with me. And so that's how my 10 year old was born. And so she's 10, and then we're married for nine years. We just celebrated our nine year anniversary. So, that's that. Um, and during this time, my mom was a huge influencer on me. She kind of like, I, she was like my money tree. She bailed me out every time. So I wasn't financially independent until I was 30 um, because I had my mom, right? So I was in debt and I would quit my job like this and she would just be here, here you go, the money's here, just go. Like you think that I'm super lucky to have a mom like this, but it was a very codependent relationship. It was so codependent that one day I think the soul just decided to, I think you have to just grow up. And so that was that. And when she left, I was really down into nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Like, really nothing. And I built my crystal business out of a cardboard box in my friend's house. And at that time, I think my second daughter was born. So, and we were moving house, we were staying with my friend. So daytime, my helper and my husband would go, um, pack the house and that time I would just go send out the crystals and that's how I really started so you have to have that resilience in you. So this is my children and the reason why you can't see their face because I'm protecting their identity. I'm no longer a marketing slut. I don't use uh, my kids to prove that I am, you know, I have done Kung Fu. <laughs> Real skill. So I don't need to use my children to prove a point, which I used to. Then it came to, I think I became so famous that somebody just wrote to me, you got three kids, is it? And I'm like, oh shit, I better take all that photos down. So don't use your kids or your, use your dog, like, don't use your kids to, you know, prove a point. So um, that was that, right? And I didn't think of dying because I did, but I knew that if I didn't die, it would be more fucked up because I would be like, so no, I didn't want to do it. So this is my third child time, and during this time, um, I quit my crystal business and I went to some MLM rubbish. It's rubbish. That's my personal opinion. It's just rubbish. So I was eight months into it, and I just knew it wasn't for me. I crashed my car, and I had crazy ulcers on my lips, and I just knew this wasn't for me. And I know what. You know, and I knew I had a gift. I'm a channel and I'm an angel healer and all that kind of like woo woo stuff. And I knew I just wanted to help somebody. I just wanted to make enough money for myself so that I don't have to depend on my husband. I just wanted that for myself to pay my bills. Like, why are you making it so fucking hard for me? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So this is how I talk to God, right? And then I was crying, I was crying. I'm like, this must be, there must be, a, this must be a way out. There must be a way out. Life cannot be that bad. And so finally I calmed down and I thought to myself, hey, you know, um, so this is how I was also out there networking party and this is my party scene. So I was like thinking, hey, you know, this, there must be an easier way out. And I remember, you know, Oprah, at the time Donald wasn't crazy and he came out of my mind, Richard Branson, Ellen DeGeneres, and I just knew, like, God doesn't have any favorites. So... That means we all have the same equal opportunities. And that was when I decided I was going to do whatever it takes to be successful, legally, morally, without prostitution, and selling out my children. And so that was what happened. So I was out here networking, doing whatever it takes, talking to God, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I was screaming in my house. So this is my personal mantra, I'm going to do whatever it takes, can take a photo and borrow it. <laughs> take whatever it takes. And then that's what happened. That's what happened. And um, by the second week after I delivered, I was coaching my clients again. And the third week, 
people do maternity massage, right? I was out there networking, wearing my six-inch high heels, networking. And so because of that, I won an award. Like an award, like me, like an award. So, <laughs> but I knew nobody knew me then. I needed validation, I needed to prove a point so that people know that I'm good, like I'm smart, like I know my shit, you know? So I became a media slut. And here it is. I became a media slut, literally. I slut my way out. So I, I met the people at Harvest Bazaar, we are good friends now. And I met them at an event, I told them that, hey, you know you got any other event, just invite me. I'm a media slut, by the way. I can slut all the way for you. Like, meet anyone, just... So I'm like, wow, you know, you're so, you're so brave. You're like, yeah, I just want what I want, right? And so that's that, you gotta ask for what you want. And uh, last year, I was back to my one dollar days, but worse. I was back to my 50 cents days. You know why? Because I had all the success. Crazy, right? Like all the success, then what the fuck are you thinking about? Then I didn't want money to define me after, you know, this, you know, having a Paris photo shoot. I brought my family there and like, wow, just living the life, living the rich life. And I decided, hey, you know, I didn't want money to define who I am. So that's what happened. You make the intention and the universe delivers. Clients were dropping out. Drop out, drop out, drop out. I'm like, so how am I gonna pay my bills? And at the time, I didn't know this thing called savings because I'm spiritual, right? Ah, the money comes, ah, the clients come, so you got no safety net. So now you must have a, a what do you call it, a savings. Talk to Richard. He has, he's good at that. He's good at uh, financial planning. So now I know better. Last year, first six months was the most horrible time. The one dollar days, no banks were calling. This time, banks were calling. Banks were howling. They want to come in and take away the furniture. Who are still there? So they really came. So my husband Tam Zhong with them. Tam Zhong means negotiate. How 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 how, you know? And so I had two banks. One was UOB. Fuck them. I love DBS. I love DBS. Sorry, you love UOB. They were so mean. <coughs> I swear. For no one more reason now they sue me, I have to pay an extra thousand plus for the lawyer fee. I'm like, hey, I didn't ask to be sued, you know. So some idiot has to pay the fee lah. Yeah. So the idiot must be me lah. Yeah. Okay lo, LPP I'll pay lah. So I paid off. I paid off the main sum and I split lo. I quite I, I split the lawyer fee into several uh, several payments, but again, I paid it off, so I'm completely debt free now and really like this, right? So, and uh, that was the most fucked up moment in my life in the nutshell. And so, I don't regularly do this now because I run a community of 18,000 members on Facebook. It took me one and a half years to build. There is no such thing as a magic pill, you, 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 you can do this. And you know, when I was so much younger, I had a dream, I really had a dream. I knew I was gonna play a much bigger game and impact. When I was five or six, I knew that, but I just didn't know how to. Um, and then I fucked up along the way and I thought, oh shit, what can I do? I live in Singapore, takes 45 minutes from one end to the other end. Huh, how, uh, like, oh, what can I do? And I asked God, why you don't put me in some happening country like America, Australia, or UK? Why in Singapore? So now I know why. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't. I used to not want to speak. Now I can't shut up. You know. So, <laughs> like, I, I I'm so conscious about my Singapore accent. Like, so weird, right? Like, everybody's like, hey, why are you German? Like, and then you're like, you know, like, like so I was really conscious about my accent, and now I don't give a fuck, right? Like, just whatever it is. So this is what I do. Um, uh, that's why it's a, it's a choice for me right now to show up. It's really a choice and I really want to be here, not because I'm forced to by Angela or, or Richard. I really want to be here tonight because it's a choice. So that's why I say you have a choice. You can don't go to work. People say I don't have a choice. You do have a choice. Just get fired the next day, that's all. So you have a choice, right? So there's no overnight success. Um, I'm a 15 years overnight success, okay, take me 15 years. So for all of you who say, oh, take me six months, three years, if you don't want to put in three years, I say, fuck now, just stop it. Don't waste your time, go and get a job, and I think that's better for you. It really takes that long, all right? So my parting words 
is if you want it, go for it. Nobody's stopping you. Like, nobody's stopping you. It's just you here stopping you. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Just be fucked up, right? So, just, <laughs> like, everybody else is fucked up here, so they're in a good, good space. So, hang out with more fucked up people, then you're safe. So, you want to go from fucked up to suck it up in life and then be unfuckable. This is what it means. And you have to have tenacity, you need to be fearless, you need to be relentless, and you need to be shameless. You need to be shamelessly talking about yourself because no one is going to promote you more than you and better than you. And you need to know yourself super, super well. And the problem is, by God, why you don't give me what I want? Why? Why? And you're so wrong if you're praying like this because God knows what you want. He fucking created you. The problem is you don't know what you want. That's why you're in shit. That's why you're fucked up. That's why you're here. So he already knows what you want. Your thing is to go and claim it. So before I end, I want to just let you know, like at the beginning I asked how many of you, how many of you believe you're fucked up? And let me tell you, you're not. You're not fucked up. Somebody told you you are. You believed it. That's why you fucked yourself. So you are not fucked up. You are not. You know why I know? Because God does not create rubbish. And you are not rubbish. Okay? And may the fuck with the boss be with you. <laughs> All the lows and then how you got out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, the, first, the early picture, I, I kept doing a, the first picture you showed, the modeling one, you, your mom wanted to be a model. I, I'm amazed and I'm, I kept looking back and forth because you look so much younger now. <laughs> Thank you. So what did, I'm just curious to know, what do you do? Both <laughs> well, No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, if I married the rich man, then I would be busy botoxing myself. Um, now, I'm just happy. I'm happy, but I'm just happy. I'm happy. Like, my husband is 10 years older than me, but he looks younger than me, so that's fucked up, you know? But um, he's got this good genes, so he should actually exchange his genes with me, then I'll be like, me. But no, really, I, I, I don't even use a lot of beauty products, because I've got three kids, and you just need to go in and out of the shower. You, you know what I mean? So I, I am just happy. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a question in here? Or was it the same question? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Elise will be around afterwards. If you want to ask your questions in private, please give a round of applause.